Well, hello everybody. I'm going to go over the thermo unit homework questions, and I'm just this is what I'm calling getting started. I'm not going to do any calculations, but I'm going to go through and show you how to set up the problems, and then you can do the work from there. Now, to do this, you need to get your periodic table out, the back of that has the chemistry reference charts on there, because you'll need this. So, the first of the homework assignments was heat and its measurements. And we have Q equals M times C times delta T. So that's M cat, as we've been come to learn it. And then if we've got a phase change happening, you need to use Q is equal to mass times delta heat of fusion. Or it's going to be mass times delta heat of vaporization. Now in this first problem, how many joules? We're looking for Q. Are given when this is our mass, five grams, cools from 75 to 25. Okay, so 75 is our starting to 25. So we're gonna do, let's see, 25 degrees is our final temperature, final minus um, starting. Because delta T is equal to temperature final um, minus temperature starting. So we started from this temperature, 75, so we'll put that over there, and our starting was 25. So there's your delta T. You have to subtract those numbers there. Now look at 25 minus 75, we're going to have a negative number. Okay, because we're cooling. Anytime cooling's happening, we're moving heat, and the energy, we're removing heat from the system, the answer will be negative. So if you've done this right, you should have a negative. It tells you the specific heat of water. And so you just need to use Q equals MC delta T. To figure you plug in the values. For number two, okay, we're still looking for calories here given off by the water in problem one. Okay, you can do one of two things. You can take your answer here, which is going to be in joules, and then you just convert it into calories by using this ratio. Okay, so there, it's either gonna be one calorie over 4.184 joules, or you're gonna to need to multiply it by 4.184 joules over one calorie. It's just conversion, so you're multiplying by one of those to convert this, or you can just use Q equals MC delta T again, and except this time for the specific heat of water, you use this number. Number three, how many joules, that's Q, does it take to melt 30, oh, melt, okay, we're doing a phase change. So phase change, we're using one of these. And if we're melting, melting, are we adding energy to the system or taking energy away? Well, sorry about that. Ooh. Well, we're, uh, we're, if we're melting, we're adding energy to the system. And let's see, this is our mass, 35 grams. The ice is at zero degrees Celsius. It tells us the heat of fusion, the heat needed to melt a gram of ice is 333 joules. So Q equals mass times delta heat of fusion, a few S. So you got the mass, you got the heat of fusion, that easy. Number four, how many calories are given off when it, okay, so calories, that's Q when 85 grams of steam, oh, I'm hearing steam, is this gonna be a phase change? But that's our mass. Steam condenses to water. Okay, so we're going from a gas, high energy, particles far apart, to a liquid. So are we cooling down or heating up? Well, steam to water, yeah, we're cooling. Now, if we're cooling down, that means we're removing energy. Our answer will be a negative answer over here. That first one, I think here, we should have put the answer will be negative. Anytime we're cooling down, the answer is negative. So Q equals the mass times the delta heat of, now we're gonna use vaporization because vaporization and condensing, condensing are the same process, just opposite ways. But since we're cooling down, we wanna take our value here. Oh, look at here, they give us the heat of vaporization. We just need to make it a negative value because we're cooling down. We're removing heat energy to cool it down. So you just use the negative number there. Number five, how many joules of heat, Q, 
are necessary to raise the temperature. Ooh, we're raising the temperature. If we're raising the temperature, it's going to be a plus answer of, by, of 25 grams of water. This is our mass. We're going from 0 degrees, excuse me, 10 degrees, that's temperature final uh, starting, to 60 degrees, temperature um, final. So let's see, this will be, okay, Q equals MC delta T. We've got our mass. We've got our specific heat. Um, oh, wait a minute, my mistake, my mistake, sorry. Oh yeah, 25 grams of water. Yeah, we're just going here, we're just warming up water. So the delta T is gonna be, let's see, the final temperature minus the starting temperature times the specific heat of water. And we want joules, so you just gotta look. Well, I think they gave you the specific heat of water in joules in a previous problem, or you can see on this, the specific heat of water in joules is right there. So you can look in either one of those places. Number six, how many calories are given off Q when 50 grams of water, this is our mass, freezes, 50 grams of water at oh, zero degrees freezes. Okay, so now we're talking about freezing here. So we don't, we're not gonna have a delta T because while water is free, while water is freezing, it is staying at zero degrees. So Q is gonna equal mass times delta heat of freezing, fusion. You kind of think of those two Fusion. They tell us the heat of fusion here. Now look at now we are are we um, we're freezing water. So are we adding heat to it or are we taking heat away? And since we're freezing, we need to use the negative value for this right here. So it'll be negative 79.2. So that that ends this one. And that wasn't so bad. Now let's go to this one right here. So freezing point and boiling graph. So you need to be looking at your notes. If you're not looking at your notes, you can't do it. So get your notes out that we took on this in class. It will be these notes here. They'll look something like this. You've got the same diagram. We did it for water. This one is just for a different material that has different melting and freezing points. So looking at your chart, you can just go ahead if you need to Okay, we've got process here. We got melting and freezing happening. We got condensing and vaporizing. So I'm just going to put freeze. This is just looking at the notes. Melting is going on here. Over there at this top one, okay, if we're going this way, we're con condensing. That's when the gas or steam up here is um, changing into water. Or if we're going the other way, vaporize. I'm going to put arrows there. There we go. So that's just kind of help you out. Now at this point, the rest of this is going to be, what is the freezing point of the substance? Well, there's the freezing point. What is the boiling point? Okay, this is where boiling occurs. Vaporize. You just go across to the graph. What is the melting point of the sub material? Okay, what letter represents the range where solid is being warmed? Okay, well, if you look on our graph, okay, if we've got ice here, a solid, it's being warmed right there. So you just look at your chart, and I'd say, you know, you could probably go ahead and label this as a solid, this is a liquid, and this is a gas. That might help you with some of those. But the rest of them, let's see. Um, so there we go. We'll see. Okay, wait a minute. Number 12. What letter represents crystallization? Okay, that's going to be like freezing. You know, like water is changing to ice crystals. I don't like the wording there. What letter shows a change in kinetic energy? Now, that's going to be change. That's going to be a delta T. Okay. What letter shows a change in potential energy? Okay, now this is no delta T. There's potential energy being stored in those things, but they haven't been, they're not changing the temperature yet. So places where there's no delta T. Okay, so let's see now. The heat problems. We went over the first page pretty well on these, I'm thinking, and got the answers on those. But the back page, let's see. I asked you not to do number eight. Convert this many calories to joules. Okay, well, I'm just going to 
make that my given over one and the ratio for calories to joules on here, one calorie is 4.184, so I want one calorie down here, over on the top, 4.184 joules. Okay, that's how you do that one there. Okay. Each of these, okay, joules to calories. Okay, we're just doing the opposite. You're just gonna use the opposite ratio there. You're just gonna multiply 50,000 joules by the opposite ratio we did there. 24, okay, come on. This is like right there, you do that. Okay, this is so easy. And then this one here, it's just the opposite. You're at Kelvin, well, okay, just do the opposite of what you did here, so do that. Okay, on these right here, now, 12.5 um, times 10 to the three calories, I don't like, that seems kind of tricky. We just wanna move the decimal place over three. So this becomes 12,500 little c calories. And we know that one big c calorie is equal to 1,000 little c calories. So you can have like this, little c calories, or you can have one big c calorie like that. So either one of those, you'll multiply um, by either one of those. And I think the rest of this, okay, if the scientific notation is throwing you three, okay, we move the decimal over, let's see, three, so we go one, two, three, four, that just becomes 35,000 joules. I don't want you to get hung up on scientific notation. And one kilojoule per 1,000 joules. Okay, we're just going back, and the opposite. 1,000 joules per one kilojoule. You just use whatever appropriate conversion factor to multiply your given by. Okay, the last, the specific heat. I asked you to get the first, I believe, six questions done. Maybe it was five on the specific heat sheet right here. Now, you have to use this chart for the specific heats if you've got an MCAT problem. So use this one, not the one that's in your book. And let's get these set up. A five kilogram piece, okay, this is our mass. Since we're using this chart, we're using, we don't have to convert to grams. Piece of aluminum, okay, has its temperature, increases its temperature seven degrees. So if it's increasing its temperature, you could say this is the temperature final, and then if we subtract seven degrees from that, temperature zero degrees would be um, the temperature starting. When he did, how much heat energy is produced in this change in temperature? Okay, Q equals MC delta T, the specific heat of aluminum. You will look on here for that one. You'll just turn over and aluminum, it's right there, 900 joules per kilogram degree Celsius, so use that one. Number two, volume of water has this mass. Okay, we got mass. If the temperature of this amount of water is raised by seven degrees, so we're, it's a plus, so we're going basically from zero degrees to seven degrees, okay? How much heat energy is produced? Okay, Q equals MC delta T. And we got the mass right here. We got the delta T. You can figure that out, seven minus zero. And let's see, the specific heat of water. Okay, so we just look on the chart there. Now, specific heat of water is gonna be 4,184 joules per kilogram. Okay, so you just use that value for C. We're using the physics values for that. Number three, how much heat energy, Q, is used to raise the, oh, let me get this back so we can see it, is used to raise the temperature of one kilogram, that's our mass, of steel. Okay, we'll look that up on the chart by 10 degrees. Again, we're increasing the temperature, so you could say this is the final temperature. Starting temperature, we could say it was zero degrees, and it turns out we just, that's our delta T there. Let's see, this is Q equals MC delta T. You can figure out the delta T there. We've got the mass. Steel, we just need the C, the specific heat for steel. And let's see, for steel, it's right there for you. Number four, how much heat, Q, is needed to raise the temperature of 100 liters of water? Oops. Now, 100 liters of water, that's gonna be the same as 100 kilograms of water, because every liter of water is one kilogram, so that it's going to be our turn out to be our mass. We're going from this temperature 
temperature starting to temperature final. So 10 to 25, we're heating up. So get your delta T there by subtracting delta T is final minus starting. Okay, final minus your starting. And it tells, oh, look at here. It tells you one liter water has a mass of one kilogram. So we just kind of did that. So Q equals MC delta T. We've got the mass right there, the specific heat of water. Well, you can look right there. It's 4,184 times T. Last one I'll go over here. When this, here's Q, is lost from a 0.12 kilogram object, that's our mass. The temperature decreases. Okay, the temperature's decreasing. Okay, so from 45 to 40. So it looks like our delta T is minus five, right? Because we're going from here to here. Final, 40 minus the starting, that's gonna be minus five. What's the specific heat of this? Okay, now we start off, Q equals MC delta T. Let me zoom in on this for you. Now, we know what Q is, it's 1500. We know what this, um, we're gonna calculate the specific heat, that's what we're looking for. So we need to divide both sides of this. We wanna get rid of the M and the delta T. So M times delta T. So let's see, these cancel out, those cancel out. So you're gonna have your number of joules divided by the mass, divided by your delta T. And then when you get that number, you'll have the specific heat. And you look up on this chart, find that specific heat, and that'll tell you which one of these materials you have. Okay, there you go, goodbye.